Kylian Mbappe, Karim Benzema, Antoine Griezmann, Usman Dembele, Kingsley Komen, and Wissam Ben Yedda. A small handful of impressive French attackers, some of which are currently experiencing the form of their lives. Okay, this country is just a cheat code at this point, isn't it? But I feel like there's just one more name that we need to add to that list. Christopher Nkunku. We gotta talk about this guy. He's been a hot prospect for a while and has been slowly moving up the ranks over the years, but the 2021-22 season has been nothing short of unreal for the 24-year-old. With 34 goals and 18 assists and 51 appearances in all competitions, it's no wonder he's been grabbing major headlines. From PSG rotation player to RB Leipzig prospect to Bundesliga player of the season, all within the space of about three years, this man's had quite the character arc. And with Erling Haaland and Robert Lewandowski both seemingly set to leave Germany in the coming weeks, he's going to have a lot of eyeballs on him in the Bundesliga next year. But then again, I highly doubt he will have a shortage of suitors this window either. And because of all of that, I thought it would be a great idea to briefly take a trip down the timeline to track how he's gotten to this point and try and pinpoint how the man's become so lethal. So with that being said, how good is Christopher Nkunku? Yo, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. I'm Sinashe. Welcome back to the channel. So I've been following this guy intermittently since his move from France. Not super closely, I must admit, but seeing his progress up to now has been a pleasant surprise for me. So let's start this one off from the very beginning. Born in Paris in 1997, Christopher Allen Nkunku was born into a family of Congolese descent, a football crazy young man that spent years trying to get better at the game to hopefully make it one day. And as we all know, that day did indeed come. But it was never easy. Physically, he was a bit of a late bloomer, which didn't help him too much early on. Nonetheless, his drive and talent carried him through. Some boys look like they have been made for something. You could see it was always natural for Christopher. Words of Frank Plain, an early coach of Nkunku's. These words were kind, but they weren't enough to prevent Lens, Le Havre, Toulouse, Monaco, and many others from rejecting the opportunity to sign him on the account of his size. Eventually, it was PSG that scooped him up. Initially, only for weekend matches, then on a full-time basis when he turned 15. We'll expand upon it as we go on in the story, but the perils of finding the optimum playing position for this guy was and still is a bit of a problem. Speed, technique, vision, and two strong feet. Where would you say these traits are best utilized? If your answer was everywhere, he'd be correct. Every midfield position, every forward position, Heck, he's even played at right back once or twice. Even despite his current flaming hot form, it probably wouldn't be much of a stretch to suggest that he is still yet to have nailed down his best playing position, which is kind of mad when you think about it. Anyway, taking things back to the 2015-16 season and Nkunku made his PSG debut at 18. His talent was evident for all to see, but being more attack-minded than anything else, as the years went by, it was always going to be an uphill battle for him to displace the star-studded front line PSG boasted. Neymar, Cavani, Di Maria, and of course the star boy himself, Kylian Mbappe. The midfield was also pretty stacked. Basically, if he wanted consistent game time, he had to look elsewhere. Which is a shame, as he's previously confessed that he dreamed of captaining PSG one day. But in 2019, from that disappointment came opportunity. Opportunity in the form of Red Bull. Leipzig. Sorry, sorry, uh, RB Leipzig. It, uh, it gets confusing, you know. 13 million euros was the asking price. The fee that was justified right away with a goal on his Bundesliga debut. And he really didn't seem to require any sort of adjustment period at all. Dishing out assists left, right and center to Timo Werner and the gang while playing mostly on the left flank. 14 assists and 5 goals in 44 appearances for the man in his first season in Leipzig. Injuries unfortunately stifled his progress the following year, but even still, he registered better numbers than he ever had in PSG colors. 7 goals and 11 assists. But the following season is where things really got interesting. Just like his time in Paris, two years into his time in Germany and he was still being deployed in numerous positions and roles around the pitch due to his insane versatility. But in the 21-22 season, his focus became a lot more central as an attacking mid, an inside forward, or a center forward. As a matter of fact, he sometimes tends to switch between each of these roles mid-game quite frequently, a change in style that has turned him into even more of a danger man than he already was and has shifted his output a lot 
up more towards finishing. In the Bundesliga, he was the fourth highest goal scorer, the second highest assist provider, was named the player of the month four times, a record by the way, and as already stated, was the Bundesliga player of the season. It's scary stuff. So let's track back to the question posed at the start. How good is Christopher Nkunku really? Well, in short, pretty good. A really soft touch and heightened spatial awareness allow him to drive forward and play even when he starts with his back to goal, and being comfortable on either side with quick feet allow him to shift and exit to either side when in tight spaces. Both factors which are evidenced by his 2 successful dribbles per 90 and his 5.7 progressive carries per 90 that he's averaged over the season, and he's only getting better and better as time goes by. A 25% conversion rate puts him in the 98th percentile of all attackers in Europe's top 5 leagues, and based on his 34 goals this year, that really means something. And it means even more than you might think when you hear that last year he had an 11% conversion rate. If you look back at the sentiment surrounding this man as recently as last year, a common opinion was that he was a machine at creating chances and getting into dangerous positions. However, a common complaint was that when it comes to finishing his dinner, he was rather toothless. He obviously still misses chances, but the improvement is palpable. And what's extremely impressive is that while his goal scoring has improved, his creativity hasn't taken a hit in the slightest. In his first year, he achieved 13 assists with an average of 3.8 chances per 90. This year, he's only gone ahead and matched his assist tally with 2.5 chances created per 90. Alright, alright, I'm sure we all get the idea by now. The guy can ball. And these are only just a handful of traits that the man possesses. I haven't even mentioned his counter-pressing, off-the-ball movement or balance among many, many other factors. To wrap this one up, we're left with one burning question. Where to from here? On the international front, if he belonged to any other nation other than France, he would probably be a guaranteed starter. But for Le Bleu, that is unfortunately never a sure thing. I mean, this is likely a whole other video topic, but just to condense it, based on the season he's just had, if we're just looking at form, I rate he deserves a spot ahead of anyone not named Karim Benzema or Kylian Mbappe. But then again, that's not considering how Deschamps will want to set his men up. Time will tell. And at club level, I see nothing indicating he won't push on and reach an even higher level in Germany. However, unfortunately for Leipzig, if he keeps this up, he's going to be taken off their hands pretty soon. That's to say if he isn't already on his way out. With all the big clubs on red alert, we've been down this road before. We all know what that means. Man United bid £300 million, here we go. And that's where we're going to leave this one. Thoughts on Christopher and Kunku? Leave it all in the comments below. And if you're feeling extra generous, why not give me a follow on Twitter or Instagram, but no worries if not. And that is going to be all for me today. Really hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're all having a good day and staying safe. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.